Cass here from Giveaway Studios, and on this one, I'm gonna show you how to turn all these pieces of foam right here into the back plate for Killmonger. Let's get it. So, I'm gonna start off with the, uh, the large pieces that go in the back, and these little triangular looking joints. So, grab some contact cement, and we're gonna this line here is kind of like your guideline to where this needs to be glued so right there so when you glue this that line should completely disappear it should be behind this piece so I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through that process and catch you guys at the next step all right so now that these are glued as you can tell the line your guideline has disappeared and that's what you use to glue it to the back here so now find these guys, these detail pieces. Uh, just keep in mind that your foam can come in a variety of different colors. It's not always just gonna be black uh, or brown. It could be red, it could be yellow. At the end of the day, everything gets painted, so the color doesn't really matter. So just find the shapes that I'm referring to. So um, now this is going to get glued this way. So you're basically refollowing that shape. All right, so I'm fast forwarding that. All right, so with this one done, this one's pretty simple. There are no guidelines laser cut into it, but all you really are looking to do is to uh, make sure that it's flush with the edge and it should sit exactly where it needs to, okay? So now moving on to the next step will be the details on the back here. And these just line up here and here at this top corner here and the side corner there and that basically gives you the alignment for everything so this should fall right where it should uh, if it makes it easier for you you can grab a sharpie and put your lines down so you know where you're putting your glue and then glue everything so i'm going to go ahead and fast forward through that process and catch you guys at the next step our two pieces our detail is put on top now we're going to focus on this piece we're going to glue this down here so this edge lines up with this line right here I don't know if you guys can tell so that goes right there okay. so there is a little bit of leftover that goes on the inside here okay so that's on purpose and then it doesn't ne quite necessarily line up with the edge there again that's on purpose okay so you're gonna glue that down here and then you're gonna grab this extra detail piece when you're done gluing this to that, and you're gonna glue that detail to this right here. So now it's gonna give you that layered look that um, his back piece has, all right? So I'm gonna fast forward through the process of gluing those, catch you guys on the next step. Okay, so the detail piece for our back is done kind of bring the brightness up a little bit so you guys can see this. All right. All right, so here I'm not really going into much of a tutorial on how to do this, but um, where your edges met here, as you can see, you can clearly see the separation between the layers. So what I've gone ahead and done is just sanded it down at a slight angle, uh, ever so slightly, just to make the piece feel a little bit more smooth. So you can do this with a Dremel, um, sandpaper, or if you have some heavier equipment, you can use belt sander. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and catch you guys for the next step. So now we're going to heat our pieces up with a heat gun. About 30 seconds on each side. And then we're going to shape it over something circular you can use you know your fist you can use your elbow you can use your knees uh, you can use the back of a two liter soda bottle uh, anything circular really to just kind of get the uh, a slight rounded shape on the back so i have my 
rounded anvil here that I'm going to use for it. But again, like I said, you could do this with your wrist, you could do this with your fingers, you could do this with your elbow, you could do it with your knee. This just makes it easier for me. Okay. And you don't want to give it, you don't want to round it too much, just give it a slight curve. So we're going to do that for both pieces, and then we're going to start working on these two that we're going to glue together right here at the seam. So I'm going to finish heating these, glue these two together, fast forward through the process, and catch you guys for the next step. Alright, now that you have the base for your back piece, you're going to go ahead and grab these. So at this point, is really um, up to you guys. If you have a mannequin, you can put it on it, really figure out the positioning of it because you want to start wearing this. Maybe have someone help you figure out how tall, how far up or far down you want to put it and then just glue it down to this piece and then we can go ahead and paint it. So that's pretty much it for the back piece. All right, so in the paint booth, I'm gonna use uh, two coats of Plasti Dip 15 minutes in between each, and then I'm going to do some flat antique nickel by rust -Oleum and fast forward through the process. All right, so in this section, I'm just gonna go ahead and start weathering. I'm gonna use some black acrylic to do a wash over the pieces, and then I'm gonna wipe that down uh, as soon as it's, well, right before it's dry, and then I'm gonna use some of this rub and buff to do like highlights and scuffs and stuff like that uh, over the entirety of the piece. And uh, that's pretty much what I'm gonna do um, in this fast forward. I'm gonna do the chest plate, I'm gonna do the back plate um, together, because it's basically the same paint job. And then after that, I'm gonna show you guys how it is that I put all of the straps together and just kind of explain the process through it. So we've done the front and we've also done the back. Now I'm gonna break down how it is that I did my strapping. Um, it's not overly complicated. Uh, it's just a bunch of like two inch strips here and there. Uh, for here, I used a combination of upholstery fabric and um, more upholstery fabric and just different types of upholstery fabric really uh, to kind of get this look. Uh, I went to a local African store. I found some African fabrics that had hints of this pattern in it, and I cut out just those little strips so I could get it. It was ridiculous. I had to buy like two yards of it just so I can get these six pieces. Uh, but this again is like a two and a half strip that connects this piece to the shoulder, and then same thing from the back to the back plate. And then uh, there's a belt that goes across. Um, I sell these on the Etsy store. Um, they're super simple to use. They have uh, Chicago screws. So when you build your jacket, you literally, there's a hole on this end. So you poke a hole through your fabric, you screw it in and it attaches. So it's as simple as that. Uh, these clips, I got them, I believe I got them off of Amazon. They're pretty expensive, but I wanted this to be as accurate as possible, so I spent the money. Uh, and here I have a three inch uh, wide tab, and I've actually, I've put um, clips on the inside, right? And they're adjustable, so I don't know, if I were to like gain some weight or something like that, or maybe someone else wants to, want, uh, wants to wear it, they can adjust those. So basically this is a three inch wide by about uh, eight to 10 inches long. And then here I have a, a military belt that I glued on top of that in the middle and I weathered that because um, he has like this fabric on top of the, the piece there. 
Uh, this is some fabric that I got from uh, Joann's. It looks like textile. And I basically put, um, it's like, uh, there's a name for it, but it's like a cotton rope. And then I sewed them shut in between to kind of create this um, three-dimensional look to it. Uh, that's pretty much it for the front. Uh, I'll be, I'm gonna put the patterns to make the vest itself on my Facebook. I don't do sewing commissions. I only sew for myself. I hate doing it and I only do it when I have to. So uh, you couldn't pay me enough money to make you this vest, um, which is why I only sell the armor parts for this kit. In any case, this is the back. Um, mine's a little different. So um, you receive this base in your kit. All this extra stuff is stuff that I added um, because when I first made this costume, I had no idea what the back looked like. So, and these are magnetically removable on mine. So this is what I initially had for the back of my costume. It was kind of like a nod to the old school Killmonger mask that he wears, uh, cause I wasn't really sure what was back there. So I just kind of took some liberties, but after seeing the movie, obviously I realized that I was very wrong, but I still liked it and I didn't really want to get rid of it. So. Uh, you guys receive the same base, um, so you can do something similar to what I did with like magnets or you can use Velcro or you can just glue it right onto the back plate. It really depends on what you're trying to do. Uh, here I have some snaps that connect directly to my vest. That way this doesn't shift around too much when I'm moving around and I obviously have uh, some nylon strapping that goes from the front all the way to the back on the inside of I'll show you guys the inside here This is kind of what the inside of this looks like. It's just a mess of uh, nylon Can you guys see this? Okay, here we go uh, It's just a mess of nylon strapping uh, some of it is on um, rubber bands so there's some flex to it it's not like super rigid uh, that way when I move around it kind of moves with me uh, and it doesn't pull away at anything so there's a clip connecting this piece to the inside of the chest plate there's a clip connecting this piece that goes around and into uh, this back piece here I believe in the movie this kind of comes in from the inside, but I had it coming out of the outside. I just, I thought it looked a little cooler that way. And uh, this one right here that goes into the shoulder one, and I've made that one adjustable. And then these go from the edge of the chest plate to the front of the shoulder piece. And then I have another one here that's adjustable that goes from the back of the shoulder piece to the inside of the back here. And this one is on um, some elastic waistband also, so there's some flex to it. Um, so when I wear it, uh, it kind of moves with me. And I have a piece of Velcro here uh, that corresponds to a piece of Velcro on the inside of the chest plate, just so that that doesn't slide around either. Um, so then, you know, if I have to stop for a picture or anything, I don't have to do a bunch of adjusting. Everything just kind of stays where it needs to be. Um, that's pretty much it as far as the how you do the straps. Like I said, it's it's not very complex. It's just a lot of measuring uh, because everything has to fit nicely. But again, it's just a bunch of like two inch wide, six to ten inch long uh, strips that you just kind of do different things to. If you attach something with a a solid piece of nylon on the other end use a solid piece of nylon attached to a piece of um, elastic waistband that way you have some flex to the material and that's pretty much it guys that uh, about covers everything for the killmonger vest all right so i hope this one was useful to you guys um, if you bought the kit from uh, my website or from etsy i appreciate the support and uh, i hope the tutorial uh, made sense and you were able to put it together 
uh, with no hiccups. If you guys have any questions or concerns, feel free to leave them in the comment section. I try to address these as often as possible. So uh, yeah, that's it for this one. I'm Cass from Give Wave Studios, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.